loved one it's bible time my favorite time of the day time to deep dive into the wonderful absolutely beautiful word of god and man the scripture of today makes me teary-eyed and i'm trying to fight back tears but you know i'm a crier so i'm probably gonna let them go at some point just rehashing the deep love of god he loves us so much and in this verse he just communicates how he's been pursuing us ever since our sin took us away from him he has executed a watertight foolproof plan to restore us to him and with all the prophecies and the stories that we read in this bible we were the point we were the end goal our salvation was the end goal and he's achieved it he's achieved it through christ we're so lucky we are so blessed and um let me get myself together sometimes we just really need to contemplate and come to understand how deep how wide how long god's love for us is as sinful as we are as disappointing as we are to even ourselves he pursues us and continues he's pursued us and he continues to pursue us because of the great love that he has for us as imperfect as we are and you know yourself you ain't all that you're cracked up to be <laughs> but he loves you as messy as you are let's read it and let me get my tears together let's read it so that you you join me in fully understanding this love and how far back it goes we'll start in verse 8 it says christ sufferings and the subsequent glories we're living in those subsequent glories in our time it says it was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves but they were serving us the prophets were serving us when they thought they were serving themselves god revealed to them that no you're serving a generation that is yet to come and we are the generation that was served by these prophets those thousands of years ago it was revealed to them that they were serving us um in the things that have now been announced to you through those who preach the good news to you by the holy spirit sent from heaven things into which the angels long to look in south africa we have a word called sabaweli and the angels sabawel it says christ sufferings and the subsequent glories we're living in those subsequent glories in our time it says it was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves but they were serving us the prophets were serving us when they thought they were serving themselves god revealed to them that no you're serving a generation that is yet to come and we are the generation that was served by these prophets those thousands of years ago it was revealed to them that they were serving us um in the things that have now been announced to you through those who preach the good news to you by the holy spirit sent from heaven things into which the angels long to look in south africa we have a word called sabaweli and the angels sabawel the angels long to look into the glories that we walk in now in our life on earth through christ they long to look into those glories and yet we experience them every day this is the love of god for us this is what he's been doing all this time since our sin separated us from him he has been tirelessly pursuing us one person at a time over thousands of years and then we go around thinking that he does not love us that he does not hear us when he has done all this work and he's done work even outside of the bible do you know what it took for us to have access to this word blood was spilt over and above the blood of christ you are so blessed to be in god and i want you to know that
And today I want to speak to that part of you that consistently makes you feel like God doesn't love you because you're not perfect. He pursued us despite the fact that we're not perfect. So don't let the enemy and his accusations pull you away from the love of God. It, it goes too far back in history. It runs too deep for shallow things like guilt that does not lead to repentance to take you away from that love. You are loved by God. I need you to say it with me that you are loved by God. I am loved by God. And if we truly believe that and understood that, we would go anywhere for him. We would do anything for him. And all he asks in return is that we live a holy life. And that's what he speaks about in subsequent verses from verse 13. That's all he wants. In verse 13, he says, Therefore, preparing your minds for action and being sober-minded, set your hope fully on the grace that will be sought, brought to you, at the revelation of Christ, as obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance. But as he has called you, as he who has called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. So it is written, you shall be holy for I am holy. That is the only thing that God requires of us. In response to this pursuit over thousands of years of our restoration to him, all he asks is that we be holy as he is holy because we've been the point our salvation has been the reason for all the drama that is in the bible and beyond so walk in holiness every day of your life because god loves you and he wants he just loves you enough to want you to be holy and the funny part is being holy benefits us <laughs> So let's just be holy, loved one. Let's make the, a decision now that we're going to be holy because God loves us. That's it for me for today. Um, my holiday has come to an end, so I'll be back on the normal time slot in the mornings. I hope that today was yet another day that you counted towards obedience in the Lord because if we're not obeying, then what's the point? What is the point? We express our love to God in view of his love for us through obedience and i hope that if you find yourself on the other side in darkness that you come into his marvelous light because jesus defeated the darkness it has no hold over you any longer believe it live it i love you and i hope you're having a good day if not may tomorrow be a better day for you see you in the morning